Welcome to our educational video on the fur trade in Canada, where we will explore how indigenous nations played a pivotal role in shaping this industry. Today, we'll journey through the history of the fur trade, the indigenous nations' contributions, the roles of different key players, and the lasting impacts of this industry on Canadian society. The fur trade in Canada dates back to the early 16th century when European explorers, such as Jacques Cartier, first arrived in what is now known as Canada, Ray, 1987. The indigenous peoples living in the region had been using furs for clothing, shelter, and trade among themselves for thousands of years. The Europeans quickly recognized the value of furs, particularly beaver pelts, for their warmth, durability, and use in making fashionable hats. This marked the beginning of a thriving trade network between indigenous peoples and Europeans. Indigenous nations played an essential role in the Canadian fur trade, as they possessed the knowledge and skills required to successfully trap, prepare, and trade furs. They used their understanding of animal behavior, their familiarity with the land, and their traditional trapping techniques to supply Europeans with a steady flow of high-quality furs. In return, they received valuable goods, such as metal tools, firearms, blankets, and textiles, which significantly impacted their daily lives. As demand for furs grew in Europe, more European traders and explorers ventured into the Canadian wilderness, leading to the establishment of fur trading posts and forts throughout the region. Two major players in the fur trade were the Hudson's Bay Company, founded in 1670, and the Northwest Company, established in 1779. These companies heavily relied on indigenous peoples to supply furs, and in turn, indigenous nations became more dependent on European goods. Voyagers and coureurs de bois played a crucial role in the fur trade. These French-Canadian adventurers would travel deep into the Canadian wilderness to trade with indigenous peoples and transport furs back to the trading posts. They often adopted indigenous ways of living, such as using birch bark canoes and wearing moccasins, to better navigate the land and establish strong relationships with indigenous communities. As the fur trade expanded, many European traders and indigenous peoples formed relationships, resulting in the birth of a new nation, the Métis. The Métis people played an essential role in the fur trade, bridging the cultural gap between Europeans and indigenous nations. Their unique skills and understanding of both cultures allowed them to excel in various roles, such as interpreters, traders, and guides. As the fur trade progressed, Europeans sought to secure their access to furs and trading routes through treaties and land agreements with indigenous nations. These agreements often involved the transfer of land and resources from indigenous peoples to European powers in exchange for goods, protection, and promises of continued access to traditional lands and resources. However, these treaties were often poorly understood by indigenous peoples, leading to disputes over land rights and resource access that continue to impact indigenous communities today. By the mid-19th century, the fur trade began to decline as the demand for beaver fur hats decreased, and silk hats became more fashionable. Moreover, overhunting and habitat destruction led to a decline in fur-bearing animal populations. The decline of the fur trade had significant consequences for indigenous peoples, as their livelihoods and economies were heavily reliant on the trade. This decline, coupled with the encroachment of European settlers, led to the displacement of many indigenous communities, loss of traditional lands, and increased dependence on government support. The fur trade has left an enduring legacy on Canadian society. It played a vital role in shaping the country's economic, political, and social development. The relationships established between indigenous peoples and Europeans during the fur trade period have had lasting impacts on indigenous rights, land claims, and cultural preservation. Additionally, the fur trade has contributed to the development of modern conservation efforts, as it raised awareness about the consequences of overhunting and habitat destruction. Today, the fur trade remains a part of Canada's history and identity, and its influence can still be felt in various aspects of Canadian life. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the fur trade in Canada and the pivotal role Indigenous nations played in shaping this industry. 
As we have seen, the fur trade has had significant impacts on the history, culture, and development of Canada, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to influence the country today.